science is being suppressed for political and financial gain. These aren't my words. This is the opening paragraph in a recent article by the British Medical Journal, or BMJ, one of the oldest and most respected medical journals in the world. The article highlights how the medical-political complex can be manipulated in an emergency and provides examples of suppression of science in the government's response to the pandemic. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the British state has exercised coercive powers over its citizens on a scale never previously attempted. The membership, research and deliberations of the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergency, SAGE, were initially secret until a press leak forced transparency. The leak revealed inappropriate involvement of government advisers in SAGE, while exposing underrepresentation from public health, clinical care, women and ethnic minorities. Another example is the Public Health England report on COVID-19 and inequalities. The report's publication was delayed by England's Department of Health. A section on ethnic minorities was initially withheld and then, following a public outcry, was published as part of a follow-up report. Authors from Public Health England were instructed not to talk to the media. In October, the editor of The Lancet complained that an author of a research paper, a UK government scientist, was blocked by the government from speaking to media because of a difficult political landscape. We're now processing 1.2 million tests per week. To date, we've carried out 15.4 million antigen tests. That's more than any other country in Europe. The Prime Minister's Operation Moonshot depends on immediate and wide availability of accurate, rapid diagnostic tests. It also depends on the questionable logic of mass screening, currently being trialled in Liverpool with a suboptimal PCR test. Well, I, I believe that the uh, industrialised molecular biological technique called PCR, so it's never been used on the scale it's being used, uh, I think it is currently throwing up an enormous number of false positives. That is when the test is positive, even though there wasn't virus in the sample. And what that does is, of course, frighten everybody. Uh, it, because we've tested now, I think, about 30 million people in the UK. According to recent research published by the BMJ, the government procured an antibody test that in real-world tests falls well short of the performance claims made by its manufacturers. Researchers from Public Health England and collaborating institutions sensibly pushed to publish their study findings before the government committed to buying a million of these tests, but were blocked by the Health Department and the Prime Minister's office. The UK's pandemic response relies too heavily on scientists and other government appointees with worrying competing interests including shareholdings in companies that manufacture COVID-19 diagnostic tests, treatments and vaccines. Government appointees are able to ignore or cherry-pick science, which is another form of misuse, and indulge in anti-competitive practices that favour their own products and those of friends and associates. How can you trust the government in safeguarding science when its interests are so intertwined with corporations? Firstly, we, the people, need full disclosure of conflict of interests from government, politicians, scientific advisers and appointees, such as the heads of test and trace, diagnostic test procurement and vaccine delivery. Secondly, full transparency is a must when it comes to decision-making systems, processes and knowing who is accountable for what. People with competing interests must not be involved in decisions on products and policies in which they have a financial interest. The Coronavirus Act authorises any payments connected with coronavirus without limit and without any form of advanced parliamentary scrutiny. The Contingencies Fund Act authorised an increase in the statutory maximum in the Contingencies Fund from 2% of the previous year's authorised expenditure to 50%. The result? was to make an additional £266 billion available to the government with no kind of advanced parliamentary scrutiny. These measures departed from a century and a half of constitutional principle 
by which Parliament should control exactly how public funds are spent. The medical political complex tends towards suppression of science to enrich those in power. And as the powerful become more successful and further intoxicated with power, the inconvenient truths of science are suppressed. Thank you.